2 Kings. And I stuck it in my pocket again, brother. No, I saw it. I turned it on. It'll do the job wherever you put it. All right. Anybody want to jump ship and come over here? Because we're on this side. <coughs> ship jumpers? <coughs> on your mark, it said? Jump. Start jumping. There's a jumper. On your mark, it says, start jumping. Oh, you yeah. <laughs> Start jumping. You guys can jump ship. Anybody else want to jump ship? You don't have to. All right, now I, I will call out your name if you're going to be talking. All right. Second uh, Kings chapter 3. It's a story we should be pretty well familiar with. It, it's the story of uh, Elisha uh, saying, make this valley full of ditches. And I did preach out of here once that I can recall. Is anybody too warm in here? Other than me? Okay. Oh, she is. Oh, Ella is. She's too warm. All right. Everybody tired? You guys went sled riding. How, how was it? Pretty good? Super. Oh, good. Yeah, the singing. I tell you, the, the people there really appreciate that. I wish I could have gone sled riding. I'm... I'm huh? I'm glad I, I I'm glad I didn't go slattering. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd be. Uh... Oh yeah, they're changing the pages. I if I went slattering, I'd have to have one of those ski lifts, you know. <laughs> but the kids change the pages for the people, and well, that's that's good. All right, now I'm going to give you one last chance if you want to come. Come on. We're so lonely for you guys. We got plenty of time. Come on. 45 minutes le or less. Shane, come on. <laughs> Look at your buddies watching. Uh oh, well, every, every chair is taken up in the back room. Uh -oh. You can move up next to Grandma if you want to. All right. I thought we would outline most of the most of this, I, you know, man, I got sermons all over in my Bible. I, I, I'm, I have to be asked, I just don't feel led to repeat sermons. I don't feel led to do that. And if I do, it's just, it, 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 I didn't do it on purpose. Anyway, uh, we are going to do this one on Elisha when he said, make this valley full of ditches. Now, our title tonight, just so you know right up front, it's When Society Rebels. And uh, our takeoff, uh, uh, I don't even know why I have that as my main, uh, I have verse 9 as the main uh, verse, but it isn't. We're just going to outline this, When Society Rebels. What, what's going on in society lately? that is kind of rebellious. Pardon? The wall? Well, that's going on, but I wouldn't call that... Uh, I know they're calling it immoral. I, I think they're just reaching for straws. Give me some rebellious things. Pardon? No. That's a... Protesting? Uh, well, rebelling against God. Marriage? Yeah, the marriage laws are... Uh, I don't even know what the marriage laws are. I mean, you can, you can marry a mule, you know? You know, some people don't care. That sounds pretty rebellious. Give me another one. Marry a mule. Give me another one. It's not prohibition today. I mean, that's 19, what is that, 1920s? Prohibition, is that 20s? Yeah. The 20s, it's not prohibition today. <coughs> I, I talk about that kind of stuff. Anything goes. <coughs> well, let's see here. They're rebelling against God. That kind of rebellion. And let's not include Christians in it. 
Even though Christians do these things. Oh yeah, murder, murder. Uh, you know, and, and they've been doing that for a long time. Robbery, yeah, well, you know why they, they catch and see that today is because of the cameras that are up there. They've always been doing that. Now, is it more often? I don't know. It could be more often, but the cameras are catching it. That's another good one. Societies, uh, but you, you can find verses to justify that. Uh, you know, as the psalmist writes, Lord, please don't make me rich so I, what? If you're too rich, what, what do you do? You, you, and you forget God, and if you're poor, you reach across the counter and hold up the guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, why are they doing it? Give me a good... All right, there. I wanted to go there. Drugs? Dr oh, yeah, we didn't even get to there. Drugs? Uh, what's the main drug being peddled now? Heroin? No, no, it's legal. Huh? Opioids. Make it, and make it even beyond that. They're starting to pass this stuff in all these states. I don't even know if it hit the... Mar marijuana. Marijuana. And it's not a town in South America. Marijuana? I mean, people are winking at this stuff. You're, we have people in this church justifying all that. There's nothing wrong with marijuana. I don't know what they're, I, I think they're chewing it for breakfast, you know. You know, they're, people, are, people are weird, man. Gambling, you know, the casinos, you know, it's legal in, a, in Ohio. If you're on the border between that and on the Ohio River, you can probably just cross the river and go gambling. In West Virginia or Kentucky. Yeah, so many states it's legal now, it's not even. Yeah, you don't have to go to... You don't have to go to Vegas anymore. Or Jewish. You don't even have to you go lose there. You can lose your wages in any state. You can lose your wages in any state. Well, in, a, in, in Cleveland, you can you lose it on the numbers. I don't ask me how to play the numbers, but they do. I mean, you stand in these lines. People are in the gas station getting their numbers and their tickets like crazy. All right, so uh, they are rebelling against God. Uh, so our first verse, it's not, it's before the paragraph marking, it'll be in verse 5. We have uh, Ahab, Ahab um, I would assume, has died. Jer Jehoram, the son of Ahab, <coughs> verse 1, is Jehoram a good king? Yeah. Well, Ahab is from where, north or south? North. Now, we're not going to study these people. That's not the point of the message. All the kings in the north were what? Bad. They are all bad. They all followed what sins? The sins of what? Uh, all, they all followed the sins of Jeroboam. It says this, Jeho this uh, Jehoram wasn't as bad. He didn't follow the ways of Ahab, but he still followed the ways of and, and practiced the sins of Jeroboam. You know, with the... Uh, setting up the capital and religious practices in Samaria, having uh, uh, the two gold calves, the changing the calendar, and making the priests out of the lowest people, that kind of stuff. And, and sacrificing, excuse me, sacrificing unto devils. He did four things. So, uh, but apparently uh, the Moabites, oh, I know what I wanted to look at. What were the, uh, uh, the offspring of... Uh, now, I could be wrong. The offspring of Lot. You know, when they, he fled Sodom and his daughters got him drunk. And what, were the, what was the name of the two? Was it Moab and... Yeah, because I, I, I'm not positive. Moab and Ammon. Was, was one of them Moab? Ammon. And I wanted to look that up. Now, they are they going to fight the Moabites? And so, I, I, one point, and it's not the point of this message, is uh, your sins, or Lot's sins, ended up haunting Israel through all this. I mean, they were enemies. They became enemies of Israel, this, the offspring of Lot that, that he had had. 
But apparently Israel uh, had gotten rule over these Moabites and put them to tribute. I would assume it put them to tribute. I didn't do research on that. We're just outlining this. We're going to apply it to our church, our lives, and what's going on in our society. Another one is tattoos. I mean, people are tattooing themselves like, like, like goofy. They're, they're goofy. Instead of selling a frozen custard at the parlor, they go out of business at the tattoo parlor. <laughs> you know, it's just that's just the way it is. They're chewing, they're chewing the marijuana. Eat, they eat that, don't they eat it? I, I think they're eating it like candy. We got a little, you know, marijuana bar and get a tattoo. Uh, do a little gambling. Uh, you could be married to a mule. It, you know, and on and on it goes. It's just pure outs outright rebellion. I don't want to apply this to Christians. You know, shame on you. Shame, shame, double shame. Everybody knows your name. I don't want to apply this to Christians. We're applying this to the lost, the lost world here. And, uh, and th this isn't a sermon on the billboard. I do want to throw this out. I'm going to ask Nathan to get a price if we could get another billboard on the west side. Because the building is paid off, maybe we could, maybe we could venture out. If we don't ask, we won't know what it will cost. And I'm going to see if we can get a discount. Maybe, maybe this is something we want to pursue and have this build up. And, uh, um, but on the billboard, it's not sugar sweet and so are you. We're not putting that up on the billboard. We're going to tell it like it is. Uh, what's up on the billboard right now? I can't think of it right now. That thing scrolls. It's every third or fourth loop. It's the billboard. Uh, it's a real short one. I just saw it. Uh, you know, it wasn't be sure your sin will find you out, but it was, it was pretty pointed. It was very pointed. I can't remember what it is. But look at verse 5. Let's get started, Father. Bless down the preaching and apply this to our life, our church, and our direction. Now, in Christ's name, amen. But it came to pass when Ahab was dead. And remember, the father's dead that the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. So uh, it's still God's people. It's still God's people. These are still Jewish. This is God's people. Uh, Ahab and uh, uh, Jehoram and all, still God's people. This is not, this is not preaching against God's people. Is the, uh, we're preaching against Moab. They rebelled against the king of Israel. So our first word here, they all start with I-N, is there is insurrection, folks. The fool has said in his heart. Pardon? The fool has said in his heart. That's it. You're right. The fool has said in his heart there is no God. That's short and sweet and to the point. Yeah, the fool has said in his heart there is no God. That's what's up on the billboard right now. And that one is just flashing, just it's, and it was brought up. Well, maybe they don't have many ads now. And I said, yeah, that, that is flashing really quick. Christmas is over. Price sales are a little down. And no one's advertising on the billboard right now. Maybe they're looking for customers. You know, it could be. And they might offer, a, and you get in, and you get in for a long period of time. So they, they don't raise our prices. It's just a flat rate. And, and see, but there is insurrection. Insurrection with gambling. Insurrection with booze. Insurrection with marriage, what's the other one? Marriage and it's on our uh, with the under government. Marriage and uh... abortion. Oh, abortion! Yeah, Tammy mentioned abortion. I didn't mention that. She said it. I was going to get there and it slipped my mind. Abortion. Uh, that murder. There's murder. There, it's just insurrection everywhere. It is all around us. It is going on with your neighbors. I mean, you don't have to go far to find it. You don't have to. You don't have to go down to the casino. A, a mile and a half down the road from us is the Roxino. <clears throat> you know they used to just bet on the ponies, and then it became televised, so you could bet on the ponies like Thistledown. Is Thistledown still running? Yeah. Thistledown runs. So now you can bet in uh, Indiana or wherever else they're running these tracks, and maybe dog tracks too. And so you could bet not just at that track, but you know we we got to import, we got to make it like Amazon, get everybody involved. And so you can bet everywhere. And now now we have to enhance this and put the one armed bandits in there, and anything else they're doing, you know, spinning the dial and whatever else they're doing in there. 
But this insurrection is everywhere. And, and uh, the devil is raising his, its ugly head and getting the people to do and to rebel against God. It's not rebelling necessarily against us. They're rebelling. I mean, we have enough of our own problems rebelling against God, let alone the lost people rebelling against God. All right, so the lost people are out there and they're rebelling against God. And so there is an insurrection, an insurrection. Now, <clears throat> our, next, our next one here in verse 6, it says, And King Jehoram, this is the king of Israel, went out of Samaria the same time and numbered all Israel. Now, why would he number all Israel? Why would he go out there and start counting people? You know, I got one, what two. Kind of what kind of a what? To, to see what kind of an army he could raise. So we're going to check out and see what kind of an, uh, uh, an army we can raise. We got one billboard on the, on the e, you know, east side, west side, all around the town. You know, we got one on the southeast side. Let's see if we can get one on the west side and raise an army. In other, in other words, our, it, it, this was his, it, the next I-N word is his intention. The intention was to, to raise an army to go after the Moabites, uh, put them down to collect the tribute, I would assume the tribute money that they wanted. Now we're not after tribute money, but there is an intention of going out there to do this. That's what he is, he is doing. Now, I, uh, <clears throat> I told uh, uh, Brother Newman, and I told Joe, I told uh, uh, not too many people, when you go down to Akron, the bomb shelter, there, and Joe said it looks, it looks like a, 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 an institution type building. It actually was a private home when it was first built. It's for sale. And Joe looked it up. I said, I, I bet there's 20,000 square feet in that place. It's a, it's a, a single unit. And he's, if you looked it up, there's 9,000, there's 9,000 some odd square feet. It's under 10,000 square feet. So if you take a, a big house here, like 3,000 square feet, it's like three houses together. It is the coolest place. And it looks like I would love to put a, a, a girl's home in there. And, uh, you know, I always have these big plans. You know, the bigger the better. These big plans. Are we in a position to do that? Starla is going, no. Are we in a position to do that? We would have to do get help, wouldn't we? All right. So what did Jeroboam, not Jeroboam, uh, Jehoshaphat, uh, Jehoram do? In verses seven through nine, he went and sent to Jehoshaphat. That is now the king of Judah. The king of Judah saying, the king of Moab hath rebelled against me. Wilt thou go with me against Moab? Now we know it was wrong for Jehoshaphat. He's the good king. He shouldn't have gone with the bad king. All right, we're not, we're not picking sides of good king and bad kings. We're not doing that. And he said, I will go up. I am as thou art. My people as thy people. My horses as thy horses. So he, he is becoming intertwined. That's our third one. He intertwines with other kings. To go up, he gets, he, he counts the number of Israel. He might figure, I don't have enough people. I better get the southern kingdom to come and help me. And we're going to put these Moabites down. And so he, he, and he said, which way shall we go up? Verse 8. And he answered, the way through the wilderness of Edom. Now he's got a reason to go through Edom. All right. So the king of Israel went and the king of Judah and the king of Edom. He went that way to go pick up another pal, the king of Edom. He, he, they went another way. They didn't go directly to what they were doing. He got intertwined. There were three kings involved in this. King Jehoram the, and the king of Edom and Jehoshaphat. So there were three. So folks, if we're gonna do this, I really wanna go it alone. I don't wanna, let's say we get a second billboard. I don't wanna get, we want to get 100 billboards. Now, my goal is let's put 100 billboards up. Now, if we get inter I don't want to get intertwined with others. I like to do this all on our own, right? I don't want to get intertwined. You know, they, there was bad news when they got intertwined. 
uh, they got intertwined with these other kings and interwoven. All right, there were three kings there. So the king, verse 9, So the king of Israel went, and the king of Judah, and the king of Edom. Now they go, and they're going, our next, and our fourth one is they make an investment in this. They're going to make an investment in this. You know, folks, it takes what to make what? It takes money to make money, as the saying goes. Uh, if you're not willing to risk it, don't expect to, to get the return. The higher the risk, the higher the gain. The higher the risk, the more risk to lose. So, right? If you go low risk, we'll expect low gains. Right? They're going to make an investment. By the way, why did, why did Elisha say, make this valley full of ditches? Seven, eight verses later, six, seven verses. Why did he say that? Make this valley full of ditches. There was no what there? There was no water there. But if you read, what verse are we on? Verse 9? But if you read verse 9, that's the reason why there is no water. They go and make a compass... In other words, they make this circle round about. So the king of Israel went, king of Judah, and the king of Edom, and they fetched a compass. In other words, they went around somewhere of seven days' journey. They killed seven days. They killed this time, and there was no water for the host, for the cattle that followed them. They waste, they make this big investment and waste seven days. Sometimes we go a long way the wrong way. Sometimes we go a long way the wrong way. Now there's going to be a happy ending to this. Somebody could argue the fact and say, well, it was God's uh, providential perfect plan for them to do that. I, I don't know. It doesn't say either way. Whether it was their own will or God's will. It, do, it doesn't indicate that. But sometimes we go a long way the wrong way. And in, 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 in the end, we make our own problems. So they went and took this compass of seven days' journey, and there was no water for the hopes. They, they go, and I would assume they make this, this seven days' journey, but the cattle that followed them was to go pick up their, uh, the king of Edom on the way, because that's where he was. They wanted to pick up this other guy. So they make this investment. Sometimes we go a long way the wrong way, and, make, and we create our own problems. Sometimes... If you have a problem, you got problems in your life. Sometimes all you, the further you, only farther you have to go is is to, is to look where. Look at yourself in the mirror, man. A lot of times when I think about a lot of my own problems, all you gotta do is look at them. I know you're tired. I know you're tired. You should, all you gotta do is look in the mirror, man. That's as far as you have to go, man. There's the problem, you know. So we go, we, we make this investment. Now, folks, there's got to be an investment in things. Uh, you know, some people may have said, uh, was it right to build this building here? I don't mean the location. We built the building on an investment. We didn't have the money. Now, there are preachers that won't do that. Because there is a verse that says, oh, no man, anything. Right? Isn't there a verse that says that? All right. Well, the way we argue, the way we argue out of that is, no, we made the deal. We just had to make the monthly payment. That's what I agreed to. The monthly payment. Right? The investment. There's got to be this investment. Well, they make this investment and they run out of water. All right. Verses nine and ten. They make this investment but you've got to give the king of Israel this Je Jehoram credit here he says and the king of Israel said alas that the Lord hath called these three kings together to deliver them in the hand of Moab is he admits the our next I N word is the inadequacy we're gonna we're gonna lose I've got these three kings, I'm one of them, we've numbered the people, we've got this massive army, and it's probably not, and the hordes of the Moabites were probably hordes, 
We don't have it. We can't win. Folks, are we going to shut down the casino? You can stand out there all day long with your picket fence and that. Who ultimately is going to, you know, when you're, you know, carrying a placards and all. I'm not saying they shouldn't do that. Ultimately, who's going to shut it down? The Lord's going to shut it down. We have to admit that we are inadequate. The inadequacy of a bunch of feeble Christians. I mean, it's, it, look at this army. It's made up of little boys. Women. Broken down old guys. See? We're inadequate. I mean, we can't go down the street and close up that rock scene you know, down there, what, Ber Ber Bernie Kozar or whatever it is, and, and shut that down. And we can't do that. Are, are you, are you going to stop the marijuana from coming in here? The tattoo parlors, you're not going to do it. We're inadequate. All right, verses, uh, <clears throat> verses 11 and 12. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord that we may inquire the Lord by him? And one of the king of Israel's servants answered, said, Here is Elisha, the son of Shaphat, which poured water on the hands of Elijah. And Jehoshaphat said, The word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. They called, they called in someone for intervention. We need this guy to intervene on our behalf. How do we intervene, by the way? By prayer. We're going to call in, I mean, uh, we're, we're not calling in Elisha, he's dead. All right, and what happened? Did they throw somebody in his grave and it fell on his bones and they, and, and they became alive? Uh, hey, come on, we, we, we can only intervene through prayer. The intervention that is to take place. They call in Elisha. Elisha. And Elisha said unto the king of Israel, What have I to do with thee? I mean, he calls it like it is. Doesn't hold back. Get thee to the prophets of thy father. In other words, they weren't seeking God, God Almighty. They are probably Baal worship. You know what uh, Jezebel was doing. And to the prophets of thy mother. And the king of Israel said unto him, Nay, for the Lord hath called these Three, thing, three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. So again, again, Jehoram says, not only are we inadequate, we're incapable. He, he then pleads and says to, to uh, Elisha, we're not able to do this. We're going to be just thrown into the hands of Moab. We're not able to do this and make a difference. By the way, how will the billboard make a difference? <coughs> Is it the billboard itself? What's on it? What's on it? Well, what's on it? The Word of God. That's what's going to make the difference. We are inadequate. I mean, we can't put up there, it's, it's wrong to have tattoos. I mean, we could post that on there. It's wrong to have tattoos. Now, where's that going to go? You shouldn't... You, Big letters, you make it short and sweet to the point. You shouldn't be gambling. Where's that going to fly? You could say abortion is sin. Now that may get, uh, that may get some attention because you've, you've identified what it is. The word sin, that is a Bible word, by the way. All right. But he admits once more. That, that's a good place for this wicked king to be in. To say, I can't do this. That is a good place uh, for all of us to be in. We are inadequate. We are inadequate and we are incapable. Incapable of doing this. Verse 14. And Elijah said, As the Lord of hosts liveth before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat. The king of Judah, I would not look toward thee nor see thee. All right, so here we are all gathered together. We have the king, the king of uh, Israel here. Uh, somewhere in our midst, we have you know, God's children. He's still one of Israel. You've got the king, uh, king Jehoram, I, I assume. 
I, I, I assume he went to heaven. I don't know if he, oh, he has to be trusting in that. He has to be trusting in that blood offering. But he is still God's uh, chosen people. But if, if he didn't trust that blood sacrifice, you know where he went. He, he burned a man. He's burned. All right, but you got, you got, you got three kings here, three kings. One of them, our next I am word, was influential. If it hadn't been for Jehoshaphat, I wouldn't even look at you. But because Jehoshaphat is here, I'll consider this. Is we need to be influential in this. Influential in this. That God looks down in favor on you and I and say that we can influence this because we are, we are God's people. Not Jehoram and not the king of Edom, but because of the king of Jehoshaphat, the king Jehoshaphat. All right, the influential. So we have we, we have a lot of pull if if we are born again and we got a lot of pull with the father. So this this man was influential. Verse 15, but now bring me a minstrel. And it came to pass when the minstrel played that the hand of the Lord came upon him, meaning on Elisha. So our, our, our ninth, this is our ninth one, verse 15. The inspiration. This gave uh, Elisha, and we hope we have a Jehoshaphat here, and we hope we have an Elisha here. And it gave Elisha inspiration. He says, call for a minstrel. He, he didn't have the answer. And so the minstrel started to play. And he wasn't say it wasn't playing one, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock, five. He wasn't playing that. He was playing Amazing Grace. And it gave him inspiration. Inspirational. And so that's what was uh, it moved the spirit, the inspiration of it all. <coughs> and then he says, and he said, Elisha said, Thus saith the Lord. He gets, he gets a reply. Uh, make this valley full of ditches. So what's our next I am word? You, you got it, the instruction. He gave him instruction on what to do. Specific instruction. And I don't think it's a wild uh, request. What would go in a ditch? What, what do they need? Water. What, what naturally flows in a ditch? Water. I mean, it wasn't like he said um, something weird. You know, uh, I can't think of something weird right now. He, 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 he tells them to do something that would make sense. to put, And not that God has to do it that way, but he said, make this valley full of ditch, ditches. So he gives them specific instruction. By the way, who likes to dig a ditch? Are you a good ditch digger? You know, we, we dug a, a, by hand the sewer line in that old building over there, by hand. They hand dug it, went through the concrete, through the floor. I mean, they used to pull railroad cars in over here. All right, there was a powerhouse over next door, and they used to create power for the inner urban car. This is an inner, inner urban terminal. They dug through there, dug down the eight feet, dug under the floor. They had to import these people. Do you know where they import them from? This is back in 1966 or 67. You know where they, the plumber imported them? And that's probably where he was from. Anybody know where they get these ditch diggers from? Are they German, by the way? Are they? No, no. Uh, they're not Germans. Germans work. How do the Germans work? Well, the slide will. Well, yeah, well, they work fast and furiously. How long do you last as a ditch digger? If you're fast and furious. The Germans, the great and powerful German army. They wear themselves out in a half hour. They're shot. They, they import these people from Sicily. They got all these ditch diggers, these Italians and Sicilians in. And he put them down in that ditch, and, and the, uh, I have to tell you what, half of that, half that hole is filled, 
filled with beer cans. I mean, you know, uh, we couldn't understand any of these guys. They were speaking English. We, you couldn't understand any of them at the beginning of the project. It took them a month to dig it. By the end of the project, we were, we were all conversing. You know, we were all talking. I was just a kid, you know. But he gave them specific instruction, verses 16 through 19. He said, make this valley full of dishes, for thus saith the Lord, ye shall not see wind, neither shall ye see rain, yet this valley shall be filled with water, that ye may drink both ye and your cattle and your beasts. So our, ne our next one, is it easy? Is it easy to dig a ditch? It might be a little easy, easy enough if it's all loose, loomis topsoil. All right? But those boys of mine dumped screenings in there when they laid this stuff. It's all over the yard, man. You dig down two inches, you hit these screenings. You have to be, our next I-N word, you have to be industrious. He gave specific instructions, but if they didn't dig, God wasn't going to dig those ditches. You're to dig that ditch. God does his part. We must do our part. We dug, we dug uh, uh, under here from the baptistry back to those steps. There's a ditch in here, a drain ditch, uh, the feed line. They said, oh, that feed line's only going to last seven years because there's limestone in here. He said, oh, that's going to run out. I said, well, what's going to happen to the feed line for that? He said, well, then once it breaks, you're going to, it hasn't broke. He said, you're going to have to fish that around through here, through the rafters. I, just, man, I hope I'm raptured out of here by then. That's what they said. But there's a drain there. Why would you drain that baptistry? You take one dipsty doodle in it. Why do you have to drain it from there into the city sewer? Bio Why can't it just go out back and dump in the creek? The biohazard's got to be treated in code. The code, says it, the code says that water is now what? Sewage. Sewage. It's great water. If you just dip your foot in it, it goes in the city sewer because your body is the V word. Bacteria. V. V, v for vic, not for victory. Our body is what? Vector. Vile. It's, <gasps> we have a vile body. <gasps> and if, if we don't put bleach in it, and you dip in there, if we don't put, we have to put bleach in that. It makes, it clogs up the, the, the drain plug won't work. Our plumber, he came in, I couldn't get the, I couldn't get the plug to work. He said, well, you, you, you got to put bleach in here. He said, man, the human body goes in there. It's, it, it's the pits, folks. <laughs> just one little dip. You know, I baptize you in the name of the Father. Just that much. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. The industrious. The word of the Lord, thus saith the Lord. The work of the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. The word of the Lord, thus saith the Lord, Elisha said. The work of the Lord, make this valley full of dishes, di uh, ditches. The will of the Lord was verses 17 through 19. Thus saith the Lord, ye shall not see wind, neither shall ye see rain. Yet this valley shall be filled with water, that ye may drink both ye and your cattle and your beasts. And this is but a light thing in the sight of the Lord. He will deliver the Moabites into your hand. And ye shall smite every fenced city and every choice city, and shall fell every good tree and stop all wells of water and mark every good piece of land with stones. I mean, it's like the, coming of the, the second coming of the Lord. So the will of the Lord will get done. N notice, not only did he... Uh, you know, in, in being industrious and let's make this valley full of ditches, you're going to get the victory. And not only are you going to get the victory, but you're going to mar their land so that these people can't even uh, raise, their, raise their head again. The industrious. And that's what we are to do. We are to be industrious. Verses 17 through 25. Okay, and uh, we've already read up through Verse 19, let's begin at 20. came to pass in the morning when the meat offering was offered, that behold, there came water by the way of Edom, and the country was filled with water. And so, uh, it, all the way through verse 25. It is, our next I-N word is the inexplainable. How do you explain that uh, happening other than the miracle of God? Amen. 
Are there any other billboards or anything like that in Cleveland? There used to be those black and white ones. You know, there was a black billboard. It would be permanent, not electronic. And said, God is watching. You know, and there was no signature, no, no other information. Remember when those were popular about 10, 20 years ago? Oh, they have one of those in Sandusky. All right, it's just black, white letters. And, and, and they don't have a verse on there. Pardon? Prepare to meet thy God. Or something like that. Prepare to meet thy God. That's it. There's no ad, nothing. Nothing like that. To say we're the only ones, folks, we're not the only people out there. There are people that are, that are busy. Busy. All right? The inexplainable. You cannot explain all this. Is that when the, look at verse 21. When all the Moabites heard that the kings were come up to fight against them, they gathered all that were able to put on army and upward and stood in the border. And they rose up early in the morning and the sun shone upon the water. God used that water to reflect. And the Moabites saw the water on the, uh, on the other side as red as blood. Probably the reflection as the sun came up, they, they saw the reflection of the sun and it looked red. And they said, this is blood. The kings are surely slain and they have smitten one another. Now therefore, more up to the spoil. But anyway... Uh, they, they got this bit, great victory over Moab. Folks, if we don't go out and do this, don't expect any victory. God does his part, we're going to do our, we need to do our part. Right? The inexplainable. And through, and throughout all of this, uh, what, did, uh, what did the king uh, Jehoram say? Man, we can't do this. We're inadequate. We're, we, uh, we're, we're inadequate. We are uh, incapable. And so ultimately, when we get the victory, ultimately when our Lord comes back and we have the victory, it, our indebtedness is our last point. It, we will be forever in, indebted to the Lord for giving us the victory. All right, see how you can take a story like that and we'll apply it to our life, huh? And we'll see where 2019 takes us, shake hands before leaving.